All righty. How's everyone doing today? I'm back with another video live and you know, I'm obviously a really big sports guy. Sometimes my fandom wanes pending, you know. So I'm a lifelong Bulls fan, lifelong Falcons fan, and in 2015, the Chicago Bulls had a late first round pick. And uh, I mean, Joakim Noah, he's a great center, obviously, right? Um, left a lot to be desired offensively. So that's why Carlos Boozer was supposed to be, let's go all the way back, 2011, 2010? That free agency class with LeBron where LeBron actually had three teams he could choose from. Uh, so we thought the Heat, the Cavs, and the Bulls because the Bulls had an amazing young roster led by Derrick Rose, and it seemed like a great fit for, for LeBron. LeBron obviously screws over the Cavs, the Bulls, ev everybody. Anyone that even enjoys sports a little bit, he decides to go to the illustrious sports town that is Miami to win championships for the expansion Heat. Uh, that's, that's just awesome. Well, the Bulls end up getting Carlos Boozer, and he has a good year or two, but more or less, it was just the summer of 2010. Everyone was trying to get a big free agent. The Bulls ended up with Carlos Boozer. Um, anyway, he, that was a bad contract. It actually ends up getting amnesty by either the Bulls or the Lakers, but it's, it's a bad contract. Bulls need a big man, late 2015 first-round pick, and they go with Bobby Portis. Now, nothing against Bobby Portis, but he's probably most famous for punching out Nikola Mirotic, who I don't even think is in the NBA anymore, probably because of stuff like that. <laughs> um, getting punched out by your teammate, he'd probably just rather go be a superstar over in Europe. So the Bulls draft Bobby Portis, and they let a kid from Chicago by the name of Rashawn Holmes slip to early second round to Philly. And what happens in Philly? There's actually an infamous uh, introductory press conference where Jarrell Okafor is like, eh, I don't really want to be here. Um, and Rashawn Holmes was more than happy to take the opportunity to be in the NBA, to be on the 76ers, and to eventually take Joel Okafor's job. Joel Okafor is hanging on in the NBA somewhere for some team doing something, but he's certainly not one of the best two-way centers, if not the best two-way center in the NBA, and neither is Bobby Portis. That's for Sean Holmes. Um, the guy makes maybe – I think he signed a two-year, $10 million deal. He's on the last – the second year of it now. So the guy's barely making $5 million. And if you look at his PER, which I believe is mostly an offensive stat, he's a top 45 player. And then that's not even adding in his defense, which is just absolutely insane. Um, a lot of people are going to see the title – Zion Williamson? Well, yeah, he got bodied by Zion Williamson. Have you guys ever seen the episode of The Office where Jim lets Michael go into the koi pond? He just sort of like, oh, just lets him fall right in. Well, best believe that's exactly what another – this guy was drafted number two overall, Marvin Bagley. And instead of – protecting the rim, protect doing anything. He just gets out of the way and let Rashawn Holmes become part of a, you know, not so great highlight for him. A great one for Zion. It's probably will make his lifetime mixtape of great NBA plays, but it's not Rashawn Holmes fault. Like where the heck was Marvin Bagley? And that guy's the number two overall pick. Like the, to me, the embarrassments on that guy, that Rashawn Holmes is the one that was trying to take on Zion from the top of the key. Mind you, he was trying to D him up from the top of the key. Like he's not afraid of any defensive assignment, but Marvin Bagley just getting out of the way, staying out of the way. I mean, is he Kwame Brown? I mean, clearly he has a bit more touch, a bit more skill, but he's, utterly useless he just gets in the way like you play him at the four the guy's seven and a half feet tall so it's funny Rashawn Holmes for being so unheralded for being a late second round pick he his he's absolutely played two top three picks out of their jobs and these these were guys that the 
you know, the franchise was desperate. They would have done anything to keep these guys in the positions that they were in. But when you have a guy like Rashawn Holmes unseating them at every possible chance, it's a little hard. Uh, something else to consider, like they bring Rash- the Sacramento Kings bring Rashawn Holmes in on a two year, $10 million deal. And having watched him dominate every single time he came off the bench for Phoenix the year before, they're like, you know, we have this young 25, 26 year old center. He's super athletic. All he does is dunk and block shots. Let's give Dwayne Dedman another chance. What, what you look back. Last year, pre-COVID, it's almost hard to imagine that the beginning of the last NBA season, you know, it was pre-COVID and, you know, full attendance and everything like that. But more than that, Dwayne Dedman was a starting center in the NBA because people like the Sacramento Kings give Rashawn Holmes $10 million and then, oh, I mean, who cares? You know what? They should have – he deserves more money. He should have got more money. And that's the thing when when you when you have these investments in a top two pick like Mel, Marvin Bagley or a top three pick like Jill Okafor, they're who you're invested in. So that's how Rashawn Holmes ended up going to the D League in his second or third year and playing games there because it was just an opportunity. He needed somewhere to play, and at the time Philly was thinking Jill Okafor is the guy. Obviously, they had they had him bead too, so they had a bunch of big men. They even had Nerlens Noel. Like holy crap. So all these guys that they were invested in, it was never going to work out for Rashawn and Philly. That's why they actually did him a service by Babe Ruth style. They sold him to the to the Suns. The Suns used him perfectly. I mean, he backed up uh, a rookie again, a rookie DeAndre Ayton, and you could. I mean, he was better than DeAndre Ayton. Look, just look at his PER. He led the Suns in PER wire to wire, essentially until Devin Booker took the last two weeks to score like 300 points or something. And I mean, he he was going for 50 a night and that is what got him finally to pass Rashawn Holmes as the, the most efficient player offensively on the Phoenix Suns two years ago. And as Devin Booker, that's a whole nother argument for a whole nother day, but you know, He's going to be an upcoming free agent. We'll see how much money Rashawn Holmes can get this offseason. He just look at the guy's numbers. He's amazing. I mean, he's 20 and 8 basically nowadays. I mean, he's averaging like 13 for the season, but you just look at his game logs. I mean, he's going for 20 and 8 with two or three blocks, a steal, and a couple assists. This guy's just a freak. He's a fantasy basketball god for those that play. And, um, I'm sure his hot shots or whatever the heck those are, I'm sure those will be of value one day. Um, So, yeah, just wanted to stop in and teach you guys a little something. There's so much more that can be said. I don't want to make the video too long, though. So just go ahead, BGSU's finest, Google him, YouTube him. But, you know, the Zion Williamson highlight is what it is. That's Marvin Bagley's fault. So, between DeAndre Ayton, Marvin Bagley, Jalil Okafor, I think I think we know who's going to end up on the right side of history in this one. And it's going to be Rashawn Holmes, and he's going to be remembered as one of those just grossly underrated players. He's already, in my opinion, the most underrated player in the NBA. And you could certainly argue they're superstar centers like Joel Embiid, but for my money, which is you can get him for $5 million, Um Best two-way center in the league. It's Rashawn Holmes. He's a beast.